All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go into game number three, potential match point for FXO. But if they lose here, they will be pushing into an ace match. Let's go ahead and look at it. It's Lucky versus Cass. The map is Antigua Shipyard. Top left-hand side is Empire Cass. 1-1 one, one is the series. Lower right-hand side, it's FXO Lucky. Of course, this is forced cross spawns, and there are no gold bases here, so this is the updated version, which is kind of a relief. Sometimes, even though the map pool has the map fixed, some mm -hmm. players host the wrong version. Yeah. And uh, you can't you can't make the guys re redo it, because while the gold is a big deal, I mean, I guess you can. It's up to the league, but gold's a big deal, but so is the strategy they choose for that map, so exactly. you almost don't even want to upset it, you know? Yeah, and, you know, you, you kind of ask, is the is the gold going to be super, super important in that game? Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But I like what they did. The mule doesn't have yeah. nearly as, as much of an effect. I think, if anything, it, it affects Zerg the most um, in terms of, you know, them actually having a, a harder time with gold out on the field overall. But we don't have that uh, problem. Both are not gold. Great job. I like you a lot. Thanks. That's it. It's nice hanging out with you guys. Again, I want to just give a big shout out and thanks to NESL um, so that people kind of un understand transparency here. They, they had me out here to cast. We're celebrating our one year celebration, the conception of NESL. Really excited to be a part of that. I'm, I'm thankful that they uh, want me to be a part of that. And it's not, it's not possible if it weren't for both my team for supporting me to go out here, but also NESL for thinking of me. So I just love all around, man. And I hope people enjoy these casts. You know what? When we used to cast, we used to just try to goof around a whole bunch. Right now, I think we're doing some pretty good mind bombs. A little bit of goofing. Yeah. A little bit of, uh, you know, we're talking about stuff that's obviously not StarCraft related. Not too much, though. Dare I say we might have even grown to be better commentators. Certainly, you're one of the most commentator to commentators on all the land. Have you kept track of the numbers that you've been doing? And ASL Season 1, it was like you did 5,000 games, whereas everybody else did 150 or something like that. Oh, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, I know Season 2, I did even more. Good and, lord. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good times, man. I'm pretty sure I'm, I, I've casted the most games of anybody yeah. in the world right now. I would think so. I would like to see someone compete with that numbers. And who better to challenge than the entire internet? So, guys, find out those numbers. That's That would be kind of cool. I'd like to know if... If I was in your shoes. Now, Lucky is doing the same opening, exactly the same opening thus far. And I'll tell you what. Okay, so game one, I really feel like there was something at play. Maybe he wasn't taking his opponent serious. Who knows? Maybe he's just tired and waking up. Game two, different kind of Lucky. Absolute monster mode. No chance in hell he loses that game. He raffle stomped all over Cass. Game three, is it going to be the same story over again? And uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because of builds. If I, if my builds execute the way it was last game. Why the heck would I change it, Greetorp? Why, why would you mid-series say, well, gosh, that worked really well. I'm going to try something else. Nope. I think he does the same thing. There was an Overlord pickoff uh, uh, in the top right-hand corner. Excuse me. Ooh, I wasn't he able hunted to for see it. that. Yeah, he hunted for it. Um, you know, Koss, I think he should kind of take note of last game. Right. And say, I will not push out with all of my Hellions when I know Zerglings are on the map. Yeah. Or at least make a god... Uh, a wall. Gosh darn. Gosh darn. Thank you. <laughs> that's exactly what you were about to say. Yeah. <laughs> a gosh darn. Yeah. That's what um, I said. Because that happened so many times. How many times are you going to get died to, to Ling counterattacks? That happened first game where he almost died. And then second game where he got counterattacked over and over and over again. And it was funny because, you know, I was kind of like mid-analysis being like, well, I don't think the, the Lings did too much damage. And then oh, more came in. Voice. And then more came in again. And eventually, just by raw stubbornness, Lucky was killing and trimming units. He was getting some econ damage. It was like nine harvesters that he killed, which is not a lot, by the oh way. Oh, God, no. But it was enough to put him ahead. Now, here we're going to have the Hellions sweep in. But they are surrounded. Queen, of course, not fat enough. Good creep spread, though. It does allow these Lings to have options to dance around. But I think both the Hellions might sneak away. Actually, that last one should get tickled, right? Ooh, and they're joined up by two more Hellions. That means... uh to the rescue. Not very good for the Zerg, actually. No, he does not want to lose those Zerglings at the beginning of the stage because he has to remake them. That's the biggest problem. Of course, opportunity cost. It is indirect Look at damage that. doing uh, 10 the more lanes. Retorp, I mean. Yeah, you had to. You had no. to because oh. if it, it could potentially be mass Hellions. 
Potentially. Double well, reactor. Well, you don't want Ling's in is what you... Right? You want Spine Crow's at the top need, of that ramp. Yes, but you need at least something. You need okay. some substance like Zerklings just to uh, to do extra DPS. And a Roach War now. So he is actually... And a Banely Nest. This might be a Roach Banely Nest all-in. Or Roach Banely, rather. Mm -hmm. The nest actually doesn't help out too terribly much in the all-in. Um, I love that he's repairing the Hellions. I, I know I'm kind of weird that I harp on this so much, but so many Terrans are just like, well, screw it. That takes different actions I don't want to do. I'm just going to leave the Hellions out there. And weakened Hellions, of course, not that big of a deal, but fully healed Hellions in this case are dangerous. And he's like, wait a second. You're still making Lings? Really? You're going to do that like last game? Well, I'm ready for it. And he's going to give him chase. I am going to be a little bit critical of Koss right now. Do it. He went to six Hellions and then went up to... Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm going out of my mind. Take okay. it back. I thought he put We're a Tech good. Lab on that one uh, factor for some reason. Oh. Oh, the creep tumors. Is there going to be a scan? I would scan. He's getting a lot of free kills here, but a scan would finish this off. And you really don't want that creep connecting the three bases. Yeah. Then Azur can take a fast third, which he's not done just yet. Cast does. Check it out. He's not going to scan. Which does mean that there should be a development with those creep tumors. Now, Cast has gone fast three command centers. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that production tab, we have 12 roaches popping out. No marauders. Okay, stem should be done fairly soon here. Oh. No tanks. What does Cast make to hold this off? He... <laughs> no, I don't know is an acceptable answer, but mm. <laughs> like, there's just nothing. There's Marines coming out, no bunkers in place. This is, uh, I'm just letting you know, this is super risky by cost. Like, super, super risky. Yeah. Uh, obviously, everybody knows this. By going double upgrades and not and putting up any center. bunkers. Yeah, it, double With upgrades, no triple, triple command center. That is basically saying, please, please, be nice. Don't all in me. Oh, no. This is a homeless person asking you for change. You saying no, reaching in your pocket to pull out a stick of gum, and then actually pulling out hundreds of dollars of cash. That's how greedy this is. Yeah. It's that greedy. Now, a bunker does go down, but look at this. It's a little late. Uh, 14 <laughs> Baneleys in production. Lots of roaches stepping up here. Lings in the front. I like them in the back. They should yeah. be sweeping around. A little bit of a poor choice there. Good angle on the depot slash bunker. I will say that. Now, more Baneleys in production. But, oh, he's uh, pulling the SCVs, uh, and the Marines uh, stim. Uh, oh, oh, surprise. God. You're in trouble. Baneleys walking forward, connecting Jesus. with the Marines, and all the Marines are gone. The roaches are left here. Good focus fire on those additional uh, Banelings. Now getting inside the bunker, but that bunker gets focused down immediately. And Cass trailing 50 supply. 50 supply. 50 okay. supply, yes. Uh, it's looking like GG, man. This, I mean, he's got a good angle here. There are Marines back here, but there's so many Roaches now focusing down on the other depot, which is not getting repaired. So all of a sudden, there's a hole in the bucket. SCV's doing as much work as they possibly can. Mules have been dropped in that mineral line, so Cass is still mining. Medivac's about to pop out. Suddenly, these Marines are starting to look actually pretty staunch. It's good hold position by the SCVs. They're not fighting, so it does take a focus fire. But they are the Marines are at 1-1, one, one, but let's I'm scared to do this. 41 SCVs killed. 42. And more to come. Good Absolutely. God, man. Marines and focusing down those banelings, but will they be fast enough? Now getting back, Depot uh, does, does get raised. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to take some intense micro. He's got to focus down his banelings. Great micro from Cass. He is focusing down those banelings. Marines, or excuse me, Zerglings split off. They want to go for the harvesters. No, now it's the banelings. And they connect with a single mule. Okay, so actually, Cass is starting to stabilize. Meanwhile, if we go back to Lucky's base, 11 drones of production, so it seems like the storm is over for now. Eight harvesters to 35, though. Oh, gosh. That is staggering, but it's okay. Triple mules give you. <laughs> I was gonna say. Oh, okay, <laughs> so it does mean that he's actually. <laughs> they're even. They're even. So. It... <laughs> okay. So... Why? What Terran player can look at that and be like, "Ah, yeah. oh. it's so funny too," because I I make jokes about this, and then every time in the thread about my cast, they're like, "Gosh, I wish a control would stop being so." Uh, you're making so many jokes about mules. Look at this. Fourteen. SCBs versus 50 drones, man. Um, what? In control, how, mm. um, how mad are you right now? <laughs> how, how mad, mad are you? How mad? Well, Lucky is, uh, if you look at his units, his army is 30 Zerglings. He does have five Banelings for defense. He's got to hold off this double drop. Actually, this double drop can do a lot of damage. Yeah. You have 1-1 one, one with two Metavacs against 0-0 zero, zero Zerglings. So if he actually targets down that Baneling... Didn't do it, but again, those upgrades, Greetorp, you're right. 
They help out, but it's not going to be nearly enough. Not enough. And a plus two attack is on the way right now. He's not getting two armor. Um, probably want to get that ASAPly. He doesn't have enough gas just yet. Uh, but look at this. I think uh, Koss is somehow rebounding. Oh, good focus oh. fire. Really good focus fire. He's got to get the next two. Oh, but he... Ugh, that one connected. Look how red his army is. He's got to heal them. He's just going to drop them off on that mini ledge that's designed exactly for Terran players. Also for Colossi, I suppose. And meanwhile, back at home, Cass is dropping mules and building SCVs off of three command centers. So it is 75 drones versus the 28 uh, SCVs. Ah. But Cass is starting to get back into this. Yeah, it's really surprising. I'm not sure what Lucky is doing at this point. You can see the surgeons are all funneled up. The Marines are consistently able to be very efficient. Look at Ooh, this, nice. actually taking out the Queen. Nice job. And the surgeons again have to run on over, form the concave. And then finally, uh, we have Koss picking up. He's probably going to go over to that little area yet again, just heal up. Yeah. And he has, nope, he's no, going to go home. home. Okay. Good harass, though, does pick off that Queen. Yes. Just kind of keeping Lucky active is the bottom line here. And if you look at that production tab, 22 more Lings coming out. Um, Lucky would like those to be drones. He's not at full saturation. Oh, actually, as I say that, he actually is at full saturation. I take that back. 70 drones against 34. Yeah, he wants to be on a fourth base, though, I suppose, is, is what I would say here. Um, Cass producing nothing but lings at this point in time. Uh, he did just now add that tech lab on the factory, so I imagine he'll be making um, tanks fairly soon here. But these Marines are what's getting him back in the game. Oh, Big oh, drop oh. at that third. Spore Crawler is actually going to town on these medevacs, but there are just too many units here. Marines are really good with that plus wow. two attack. They do so well. And this third, this it's gone. Oh, my gosh, it is. He's going to focus it down at least. And while wow, Lucky actually doesn't have any Banelings, they're just now morphing in. And it's only four Banelings, by the way, so actually... This is dangerous. He gets in here in time. He's focusing them down. Uh, no what? Way. No way. What? No way is this happening. He doesn't do it. And look. Oh. oh. One misstep. Okay, so Banley does connect, which means that this attack has to go home. But for a brief second there, I saw Lucky's life flash before his eyes. The, the infestors had not yet popped out. He's got nine infestors about to pop out. And he's down to equal base with the Terran player. What just happened, Gretorp? I agree, man. This is absolutely insane. Don't forget, Empire Cast does have that extra command center, so he can easily take a third if ever he's able to stabilize, you know, his his mindset. I'm sure right now he's just a little bit frazzled, trying to do as much harass as possible, and it's get it's it's good. It's getting done. The problem is we don't have a tech continuation just yet. What he's looking for yeah. are infestors. Infestors, are they on the field? Yes, they are finally. Of course, they're going to help out with those drops. If ever there's a money fungal, oh my gosh, Lucky will yeah. be in such a great position. But his upgrades aren't too relevant. Oh, uh, there's we the fungals. Yep. Okay, so I feel like our Cinderella story might be coming to an end here. That That's the whole army. And uh, Get those that's what fungal Get does, those man. Oh, he's got to get the medevacs. If he lets us go, that's a huge mistake, and he does. I don't like that Gretorp. I mean, you've trashed oh. the guy's economy. Actually, there's a drop oh, in the wow, main I didn't over see there. That. Holy crap. And this lair might actually be in a lot of trouble. The Zergans are able to get in here, but you can see the upgrades doing so well. Now they have to hightail and run because those infestors are the ones wow. that will be able to just shut down those medevacs. Lucky, he is getting, uh, he's getting smashed. He's getting cut apart. I mean, okay. Actually, in that moment, it was a bit of an exchange. Like, the Terran player did lose his entire army. So if you go back at home, Unit's tab shows 23 Marines in total. Uh, he actually has nine medevacs. There's almost one, one medevac wow. per two Marines. It's pretty ludicrous. Mm -hmm. Lucky needs to sit back, and he needs to build up energy on these infestors, and then perhaps poke and prod at the third. Because of the low tank count, yeah. you're not too worried about losing your infestors. But man, oh man. Um... How sad is it that there was like this huge comeback from oh, Cass? No. And oh. the siege tank, it's just sniping off all the infestors. Look at this. Fungal what is he growth doing? can't go down. And these Zerglings what is are he doing? so weak. The Zerglings are so weak, man. It's a really good concave from the Terran player, too. So Fungals actually are. There's just not enough of them. With the upgrades and the amount, the sheer number of medevacs. Okay, Gretorp. Lucky just handed that game back because the upgrades are so good and the number of medevacs are so good. Oh, wait. Well, okay. Um, oh my god. He and actually didn't lose that many Marines there. If these Marines pick off the Evolution Chambers, that will be a, the game-winning move, I think. But Costa is just going to get do there. Yeah, they're not going no, yeah, to. Okay. They're, they're obviously not. But, oh Jeez. man, he stopped that 2-2. That would have been so sick, man. 
that Toss would be also had those uh, medevacs there for quite a long time, so he could have done that, utilized that advantage, or at least that option. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to multitask everything together, so um, just a little, little tiny thing by Cost, by but I yeah. think he's still in a great position as 3 2 is uh, right now upgraded. Well, 3-3, three, oh. three, actually. Well, three, three, three attacks about to finish, yeah, and three, three armor is not too far behind. Retaining all this medevac, so I'll return to that for just a second. I mean, gosh, if you look at the money of, of uh, Cass, he can't really afford to rebuild nine medevacs. So you really, as a Zerg player, got to fungal those just to complicate their economy because you're, you're trading fungal energy for real, you know, important stuff. I mean, medevacs, the Marines are just absolute trash without them, but... Well, they're not trash, but you get my point. Yeah. Now, the Battle Dome is being held by the Zerg player, which means, of course, you cannot saturate this mineral line. But with tanks, he should start to kind of crawl forward. Apologize for missing all these drops. Thank you for Greetort for being the perceptible, or the, the guy that sees that. There we go. I kept missing him. Third base is under attack by this one drop over yeah. here. And, you know, he could potentially focus this down. But what that's going to do is, you know, remove all the units in the center of the map. And potentially, cost could go in there. That would be really oh nice. Oh, God. All those mules. Uh, there's the fungal. Nom. Money fungal. It gets Nom. every single one of them. Oh, buddy. Oh, he waited just a little bit too long. So good. I'll take it. Just one escape, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. And then it later dies here. I mean, that's still Drop what? now. 810 minerals that you're killing? Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, double drop inside the main. Looks like they're going to return to that kind of soft spot where there's a spawning pool, as well as the evolution chambers. But the quick reaction from the Zerg does mean that Zerglings should be here in time. Toss might be able to clean this up, though. There's just so well, many. Those Marines. are just two good Marines. Yeah, they're. They're too strong. Uh, but Fungal Growth doesn't care about upgrades, let me tell you that. They just say LOL. Adrenal Upgrade did not finish. It was being upgraded, and it got sniped oh, by that, that spawning pool's death. Now, I will say this. There's a drop at the fourth. Meanwhile, also a positional push going on through the middle of the map. Cast seems to be everywhere at once. Can Lucky keep up? He's starting to fall behind Supply Retort. Man, cost from 8 SEVs to 35 is able to come back into this. This is so surprising. These drones are just going to be forfeit over here. Uh, he hasn't Lucky rebuilt the spawning gonna, pool yet. Yeah, he's... Oh, real? Are you serious? I'm being serious right now. Oh, my God. That is crippling. And look at that, m the mineral count. 2,000 minerals, 1,000 gas. I, he, like, either doesn't... He just doesn't know about it or Sweet something. He's... Merciful He's crap. getting taxed by the actions of Cass, which is absolutely stunning. Now going after the spine crawl, it's, of course, the lowest priority. But he's got three Marines going to make their way. Nope, never mind. They're thinking about something, and then they backed away. Spawning pool still not remade. I cannot stress enough how devastating this is. Now, Cass has moved up to four bases, Greetor. Yep. He's making the comeback. God, this is absolutely insane. I love, though, a spawning pool. That would be a sick, sick move to actually go. Hello. Uh, but... <laughs> You know what? He's not out of it just yet. I mean, Broodlords are... Yeah. And look at this Infestor count. It's actually yeah. very alarmingly large. 15 Infestors out in the field. And along with that, the Broodlords, that combination is so powerful if you do not yes. have the correct composition. 12 Banelings being made. And Cast is not, by the way. And guess what? Spawning Pool has been remade, sir. Cass's, uh, Cass's army is, is uniquely out of position to handle Broodlords. There's yes. no Vikings. If you think Ghosts are a terrible counter, fine. But there's no Ghosts. There's no Thors. There's just Marines, which means that a couple of Fungals and this Broodlord army, which is now here, all of a sudden Cast is in a really tough spot. Now, one of the ways you can punish this army is it's a very immobile army. So watch that drop on the left side of the map. This is key. If Cast can start to really start to harass and pick off infrastructure and slow down this juggernaut that's mm -hmm. making its way to him, he can buy himself enough time to get the response he needs. That's exactly right. But what does he do to deal with all these drops all over the place? His funny claw has been so far delayed. Um, you're exactly right. I mean, you need to have those Zerglings to really just be able to kind of zone out your opponent, make sure that they're not taking advantage of you. Uh, I do want to mention that 3-3 is not being upgraded for the Evolution Chamber. So there Can't is, afford it. Yeah, th that's a big problem, though, because it, it messes up right. the ability for Lucky to actually transition. A lot of times in this endgame stage, wow, this it's is a, a lot of drop. stuff. Uh, but this endgame stage, you actually have a ton of, um, you know, transitions that you do, just punishing your opponent for not having the correct composition. Retorp, look at how perfect this army is. Tanks don't help against Broodlords. Cast needed the time, and he wanted to do damage fast. He's going to pick off that hive. He got both the evolution chambers, so the question of 3-3 is no longer a question. It's been answered. Not going to happen. 
And Cass is buying himself the time he needs. Now this fourth phase that Lucky so desperately needs for his own economy is going to die for free. Yep, nice job. He retains all those Marines. That's, as you said, the more important factor in all of this. And losing the Hive Tech uh, is really, really tough. And right now, all we should see coming out from Koss... Drop at the third, too. Oh, wow. That's a critical drop. You're slowing down that income for Lucky that he does not have. If you look, his money is at sub-100, and this is not, like, amazing spending. This is mm -hmm. partly in spending, of course, but it's also he's not really bringing money in. It's still and a tough position for both these players, uh, I do want to say. I mean, yeah. not, neither of these players are in a, a commanding lead by any means, by any stretch of the imagination. The center base is being taken by Lucky. He's looking to take that yet again. Hopefully he can take that center control. Now that, you know, actually losing this main and the hive and everything works out a lot better for him. Uh, I, I kid you not, because it's less space he actually has to cover. Yes, remake okay. the lair, remake the hive, but uh, now he doesn't have to worry about, you know, being pulled apart all over the map. Well, it kind of looks like basically Cass is saying that's as much time as I can afford to buy, and I'm going to start making my army that's going to make a final stand. So mm -hmm. a lot of Marines, a lot of Vikings are coming out. Thors are being added to the mix. We have two in production right now to add to the already produced five. But this is a, a Zerg invasion force, man. This is what I imagine clouding the sun and coming after Earth if it ever came down to that. And oh, Cass is going to make a stand. So here it goes, sweeping around. Fungal's coating those Marines. The Thor is getting a good concave. Brutal count there. Bailey's making the connections they need. Is it going to be enough for I think the Terran will hold. There's just not enough anti-air in this position. The Infestor is going to poop out as many Infest Terrans as possible. But, wow. you know, it's going to be tough. The Brutal actually die before that happens. The Thors will die as well. But, you know, I think Holy overall crap. Koss will be able to resupply very easily with those Marines that are 3-3. Three, three. Where are the power hitting units now? Lucky has nothing, and he can't really remax in Zerglings because they're at 2-2. Two, two. So he doesn't have a good continuation to this. Retorb, this is it. It's the final stand. Queens have been added to the mix. A lot of Infestaterrans going down. This is the one mining base for Cast inside his natural. It has been mined out. He's actually making an effort to get out of here. Meanwhile, there's a counterattack from the Terran player. Zerglings swelling back trying to hold off those Marines, but they're so well upgraded. And even with the Fungals, the Marines are weathering the storm, and these Infestors have ran out of energy in Greetorp. Once again, what upgrade is missing here? Burrow. It is Burrow. Nothing yeah. can save him. That was an expensive and costly fight. Meanwhile, yeah. having lost that Hive, we're down to, well, I think a Spawning Pool. Yep, Spawning Pool and Spire in the a Roach Horn, I suppose. He That's needs it. to shut down this bottom left-hand base. There's no way. If he lets his planetary fortress finish, it's going to be a disaster. Zerglings are moving all the way over there, but Zer uh, Marines are actually going to be dropped down, and this is perfect. Oh, my gosh. And Such smart play by Cash. Wow, Koss, all of a sudden, he was... Not all yep. of a sudden, but he has been able to do the unthinkable. Coming back from a huge Eight. deficit. Eight, Eight SCVs. SCVs to 35. 45. 45. 45. Sweet merciful mother of God. Yeah, dude. This is this has to be in one of the most intense comebacks I think I've ever seen. It's not there just yet. Lucky still has a lot of infestors. Look at that middle of the map. And again, um, not a whole lot of tanks for Cass. Now, Thor's right. do pretty okay too, but this is a strange battle here. Now, it is pushing forward. Does go ahead and drop a fungal on those Vikings. I don't know if he has to worry about those guys quite as much. He's kind of given up on that. And if he can fungal those Marines and get a good surround on those Thors, there is a chance that he can actually still... Play the disappointer, honestly. I think everyone's at the edge of their seat rooting for cast right now. If you're not, that's crazy. But man, elevating those units to that planetary force on the left side of the base, that is such a key move. If he doesn't do that, Banelings, or excuse me, the Zerglings surround the planetary and it never gets up. The best way to take out planetary forces are going to oh. be with Hive Tech. Here we go. The engagement has started right now. It looks like Thor's should start targeting down. Oh, crap. Should start targeting down those investors. You can see there's just not enough units out here. No. And the. Um, Finally, two Thors do go down, but that's a lot of Zerglings to, to die right here. Now There's Marines a big drop at the fourth base. At the bottom, wow. And all the fourth uh, drones are going to be cleaned up here. Koss. Wow. Koss is going to take it, man. He's going to take it. That's There's it. no way. He's up 122 supply for 75. There's still a lot of investors out here, but they don't have a lot of energy. It's like two fungals between all those investors. A lot of Lings, sure. But Cass is now mining off of two bases healthy. And uh, I don't know how we got to where we are. I don't either. But Cass has made the comeback of a century. And what a clutch comeback, too. Let us remind you, if he loses this game, um, that's it. FXO takes a sweep. Or not the sweep, excuse me. But they win 3-1. And there is no $1,000 for them. But if, if 
Wow, if Cass is able to complete this comeback, this will go down to an ace match for $1,000. That will be huge. Huge! And Cass, it looks like, um, you know, this Planetary Fortress is going to be under attack, but I don't think it's going yep. to do very much. The Planetary Fortress needs to target down the Infestors. Very nice job. Uh, it will go down. No burrow, though. Th this is a one-way trip. Yeah. Okay, so you get the Planetary. But if you lose all these Infestors and you're only mining off of one base, which, by the way, is down to three mineral fields, congrats. You kill the base and trade it for the game. That's it. That's it. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will be going into an ace match after Cass is going to eliminate Lucky from this game. And wow, what a game we had. Oh my gosh, the comeback is absolutely outrageous. The Infestors do get corralled and are sniped. Zergling's trying to make a little bit of a counter. They pick off a tank in the middle of the map, but honestly, again, with even another base going down for Cass in the middle of the map, and if you look at that production tab, okay, six lings, two Infestors coming out. He's long distance mining yeah. from the middle of the freaking map. Do that. Lucky, Lucky is just, on his last legs. He's in, he's in disbelief, I think. He just cannot believe yeah. what's going on. And I think a big problem was not having that 3-3, not being able to transition into something like Ultras. I think Ultras would have been great right. when your opponent goes so many Vikings. Switch it up. Smash face. You're good to go. But there, there it, is. it is. And he completes it. Cass has done the unthinkable. Oh, my God. If you would have told me that, I mean, jokes aside, make any joke you want about mules, I cannot believe that Cass hung on to win that game. And the funny thing is, is this is a 36-minute game, but it was actually like three and a half minutes after almost dying that we were like, wait a second. Is Cass going to win this game right here, right now? And then he went home, and he was like, no, I'll play it safe. I'll do the comeback later. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely staggering. I mean, we even called it, he's dead. It's like, Cass... He, he's down to eight SCVs. We're yeah. sort of saying he's so far behind. The only thing he has going for him is his upgrades, and that can normally be mitigated with things like Banelings and, and Mass Zerglings if you just stop the drops. But it looks like Haas, just on top of everything, able to perform what a hero. such a great comeback and put his team into the ace match. I hope we see Haas in the ace. I really do. The ultimate clutch, man. The absolute ultimate clutch. 1-1 one, one series, down that far, I think... I think 99% of Terran players would have GG'd right there. Yeah. They're just like, well, I would have. GG. You know, nothing I can do. But he holds on, comes back for the win, and, and that is a game for the century, guys. So we're actually going to go to Ace Match. We're going to announce these players in just a little bit after a little bit of a break. See you guys soon.